What's going on everybody? This video we're going to be talking about the other two pieces of object-oriented programming. We talked about encapsulation, now we're going to talk about inheritance and polymorphism. And it's going to be awesome, so I'm hoping you guys are excited. Now again, my goal here is to keep it simple. So this video is not going to go into intricate details and into the weeds. My goal is to help you understand what these concepts are and how they work inside of C++. So yeah, let's just get started. But first you need to check out our sponsor Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy it to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. So first, the concept of inheritance. With inheritance, you can basically make one class inherit the, the members of another class. So you kind of have like a parent-child relationship here. So the purpose of this is you might have an overarching class that describes the basics, and then you might have some specific children classes that are slightly different. So for example, we might have a user class, and this might have first name, last name, status, email, or whatever we want to contain about a particular user. And then we might have what are known as subclasses that inherit from this user class. Let's say we're making an application for teachers and students. You might have a teacher class, and you might have a student class. Now, if you think about it, teachers and students have a lot in common. They both got names, they're both humans, and so forth. So why have duplicate content in both of these classes? If you need to describe teachers and students separately in separate classes, but the majority of the content of the class is shared amongst them, you can put it in what's known as the base class. So here is the base, and here are the subclasses, or more appropriately, derived classes. So this is a pretty good example, but you might also have animal and then dog and cat, because those have a lot in common. But they're probably distinct enough that it would be appropriate to have their own classes. Depends on the application. You might also have media file and then video file, photo file, and then maybe a text graphic file, like uh, when you type on like a video editor or whatever. <laughs> The actual entities that we're describing is less important and the concept behind it is what is more important. Basically, the teacher is going to get all of the stuff that's in the user and the student is going to get all the stuff from the user as well. So when you define the teacher, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna say class teacher and you're gonna put a colon and then say public user. So that is how you establish that connection. You're going to inherit the stuff from user. Now the public there, you don't really need to worry about that, but you can put different access modifiers there if you want to basically change the way the members are inherited, change the access of the members. I'm gonna keep them all at default, so to do that, we're gonna put public. So even if this class is empty, we can still create a teacher and call things on this teacher. So we could say teacher.firstName. That's because this first name is probably defined in this user class. You can do the same thing for student, get the first name from the user. Now, why would you do this? Why not just make them both users? Well, probably because there's some distinguishing factor between teachers and students. For example, inside of the teacher's class, you can have a collection of classes teaching. Inside of the student class, you could have a data member such as the student's major, if this was a college. You can distinguish these entities, but share a lot of common things by deriving from a base class. So that is the concept of inheritance. Now polymorphism is hand in hand, very similar in nature because it kind of comes from inheritance. The idea behind polymorphism, you can treat a teacher as a teacher or you can treat the teacher as a user because the teacher is both a teacher and a user. <laughs> it's kind of confusing in nature and when I say it out loud, I kind of sound like a psychopath. That's because a teacher qualifies as a user and a student qualifies as a user as well. Now this seems like such a simple observation, but it's really useful because we can actually talk to all the derived classes as if they are users and they will do the appropriate thing. So for example, we could say, users, get to work. 
And what's going to happen is the teachers are going to go teach stuff and the students are going to start studying. Now C++ has something known as multiple inheritance, meaning a class can derive from multiple classes. This is not something you can do in like C Sharp, for example. C Sharp has the concept of interfaces, which is another common object-oriented programming technique. But don't worry about all of those differences. The main thing you need to understand is the concepts of inheritance and polymorphism. Once you got that down, you can go learn about the different techniques for implementing object-oriented programming in the different programming languages.